In this video, we're going to be looking at an example of finding the area of a surface generated by rotating a given curve about the x-axis. So here we have the curve y equals the square root of 1 plus e to the x, and we'd like to rotate that curve about the x-axis from 0 to 1 and find the area of the surface of revolution. So since we're going about the x-axis here, what we can have in mind is that we have some sort of um, line segment approximation over a little interval that we're thinking about going about the x-axis. So we're thinking about little pieces like this that are going to generate these, ba um, these bands that we'd then be adding up to get the total surface area. And the radius of one of those little bands here, our distance between our curve and our x-axis, is going to be our function f of x. So we're looking at our surface area here being an integral from 0 to 1 of 2 pi times the radius piece, which is going to be our f of x, and then times the length piece here, okay, which we know in terms of our arc length formula, is the square root of 1 plus f prime of x squared dx. And remember, we think about our surface area formula as being this 2 pi radius length um, type formula. Okay, so what do we have here for this particular example? Well, we're going to have um, our integral here from 0 to 1 of 2 pi times the square root of 1 plus e to the x, and then we're going to have that times the square root of 1 plus the derivative of our function here, squared dx. So as in our arc length problems, it's useful for us to go ahead and figure out what's going to go under this square root first, and then plug it all into our formula. So first we're going to find what y prime is. So we have y is the square root of 1 plus e to the x. So y prime is 1 half 1 plus e to the x to the negative 1 half times the derivative of the inside. So we're using the chain rule. So we have times e to the x. And we see that this is going to give us e to the x all over 2 times the square root of 1 plus e to the x, if we rewrite that without any negative exponents. Okay, so what about the derivative squared? What is that going to be? So if we take e to the x over 2 times the square root and square that, we're going to have, let's see, e to the x over 2 times 1 plus e to the x under the square root, that whole thing squared. This is going to be e to the 2x over 4. We square that square root, we're not going to have the square root anymore. So we're just going to have 4 times 1 plus e to the x. Okay. So now we're going to want to look at figuring out what we get when we add 1 to that. So let's come over here. So we want to see what is 1 plus this derivative squared. Okay. So we have 1 plus e to the 2x over 4 times 1 plus e to the x. So we've seen in a lot of um, arc length problems here, we had to try to combine the 1 with what we had squared so that we could look at simplifying, combining these terms in some way to turn what's under the square root into some total quantity squared. So here to combine them, we're going to need to use a common denominator. So we're going to rewrite 1 as 4 times 1 plus e to the x, so we'll have that plus e to the 2x, and then this will be all over 4 times 1 plus e to the x. So we just multiply 1 by 4 times 1 plus e to the x over 4 times 1 plus e to the x and get the following here. So now we can look at trying to combine some of these terms or see what sort of thing we have here. So we have 4 plus 4 e to the x plus e to the 2x all over 4 times 1 plus e to the x. Okay. So notice that I do have this trinomial, three different terms here in the numerator. So I want to think about whether I can factor that into something squared. And it turns out if I write down e to the x plus 2 squared, that does give me back this um, e to the 2x plus 4 e to the x plus 4 for the numerator. And then this would be all over our 4 times parentheses 1 plus e to the x. Okay, so now we're ready to plug everything into our formula. So we have our surface area here as the integral from 0 to 1 of 2 pi, the square root of 1 plus e to the x, and now we're going to have the square root of e to the x plus 2 squared all over 4 times 1 plus e to the x 
dx. So we don't want to forget our integral notation as we're going through this as well. Okay, so now we're ready to simplify this. And we see that we're going to have the integral here from 0 to 1 of 2 pi, the square root of 1 plus e to the x. Then we're going to be undoing this e to the x plus 2 squared, so we'll have the square root of that thing squared, which is just going to be e to the x plus 2, since e to the x plus 2 is always positive. And this will be all over our square root of 4 times 1 plus e to the x, or 2 times the square root of 1 plus e to the x. So remember, we were using the fact that the square root of x squared is equal to the absolute value of x, where that's um, exactly what we're taking the absolute value of x if x is greater than or equal to 0, and the negative of it if x is less than 0 in order to make it positive. Okay, so what simplification can we do further here? We'll notice that I have a square root of e to the x and a square root of e to the x, excuse me, square root of 1 plus e to the x, so those two things can cancel, and these 2's can also cancel. I also need to remember to keep my dx notation here on this next line. So we have an integral from 0 to 1 of pi times e to the x plus 2 dx. So this sort of simplification where something um, that's under our square root ends up canceling with the radius piece that we have outside of the square root is something that we see in um, a good number of these surface area um, integrals. Well, we're ready to go ahead and evaluate this. You can pull that pi out in front. We just have to do our antiderivative of e to the x plus 2. So we're going to have e to the x plus 2x here evaluated from 0 to 1. So we have pi times e plus 2 minus e to the 0 plus 0. So we have pi times e plus 2 minus 1. So we have pi times e plus 1 is the answer for our total surface area.